Hi guys, it's Miss Batty here with a reading called Life in the Arctic. Let's get started. The Arctic Ocean may be very cold, but it's filled with lots of different organisms. Here's a picture of the Arctic. At first glance, the Arctic Ocean might not look like a great place to live. After all, it's cold there. However, despite its year-round climate, the Arctic is full of life. The chilly Arctic waters are home to many different populations of organisms, from tiny algae to giant whales. To learn more about the populations that make up the Arctic ecosystem, like the Gulf of Alaska, read one or more of the chapters that follow. So we're going to find out some about some of the populations that are living in the same ecosystem as the moon jellies. The moon jellies. Moon jellies got their name because of their pale round bodies, which look like the full moon. Unlike many types of jellies, moon jellies do not have long tentacles for catching food. Instead, they trap zooplankton. So I'm gonna make a note here that this is their resource population. They eat zooplankton, which is gonna be important. Tiny animals floating in the water on the sticky undersides of their belly-shaped bodies. These jellies do not sting the zooplankton they catch, but they need only a mild sting because the zooplankton are so small. The sting of a moon jelly is harmless to humans. Interesting, because I don't think always that jellyfish things are. Moon jellies can move themselves through the water by squeezing their bodies in and out, but they are not strong swimmers. Most of the time, they let water currents move them from place to place. That's really interesting. So they're moving, oops, they're moving, um, moving by the currents. So maybe if the currents are changing, um, their movements do too. That's kind of interesting, could be important for our story. These jellies are seldom seen alone. They usually appear in huge groups of hundreds or even millions of jellies. Gathering in groups may provide some protection from predators such as sea turtles. And here's a picture, they're so cool. Another reason that moon jellies gather in large groups is their method of reproduction. Jellies never actually pair up and mate. Instead, males send out sperm letting water currents carry the sperm to nearby females. The females reproduce dozens of eggs, protecting the eggs with their bodies as they develop. Now, we know births are an important part of the story, so I'm gonna highlight this part um, and make sure I highlight it, and I'm gonna also add a note here that the moon jellies reproduce or are able to give birth ending out that sperm. Um, so when they're clustering, is that increasing the birth? Something that um, some of my students were thinking. The walleye pollock. People eat a lot of walleye pollock. I don't think I've ever had it before. If you have ever eaten a fish stick or a fish sandwich from a fast food place, you've probably eaten walleye pollock. Oh, then I definitely have. This type of fish is valuable to humans as a commercial fishing catch. Scientists and fishermen keep careful track of the pollock population to make sure it doesn't get too small. Walleye pollock are silvery in color with speckles that help them blend in with the sandy bottom of the ocean. They grow up to be about half a meter, one to two feet in length and weigh up to one kilogram or two pounds. Part of the Pollock diet is made up of zooplankton. Oh, I'm gonna highlight this um, and add a note here. So the zooplankton are the resource population as well. So we saw in the moon jelly, the zooplankton were the resource too. That could be an important part that I want from protection from predators, large number of pollock swim together in dense schools. Predators that eat pollock include larger fish and sea lions. Okay, great, so 
their consumer population is larger fish and sea lions. Interesting to find out about those. Pollock gather in very large groups for the purpose of reproduction. Each female sends out thousands of eggs into the water and the males send out lots of sperm at the same time. Carried by the water, the sperm and eggs meet and the eggs are fertilized. The larger the female, the more eggs she will reproduce, up to one million. Zooplankton. So these are the things, oh, this is what they look like. Interesting. These are the things I'm gonna make a note um, and, and put this here because it seems really important. Um, oops, highlight, and we're gonna add a note here. This is the resource population for the jellies. So we really want to understand about these guys. Zooplankton are tiny animals that drift through the water, moved from place to place by currents. There are many different types of zooplankton, and most are too small to be seen. Some zooplankton eventually grow and change into fish, crabs, sea stars, and other animals. I'm going to pause for a moment. This actually um, gives me a question. How do uh, the ecologists study these populations? Um, because we saw about the population samples with the, the moon jellies, but if they're too small to be seen, I wonder how they get data on these populations. These tiny animals have hard outer coverings, legs with joints, and long antennae. Different types of zooplankton have different ways to keep themselves from sinking to the bottom, such as gas-filled floats in their bodies and flat body shapes that act like tiny parachutes. Many zooplankton are clear so that they are harder for fish and other predators to see. Zooplankton eat tiny algae that drift through the water. Another source of food for zooplankton is other zooplankton. Crazy, so they eat other zooplankton. Um, that's kind of unexpected. But I did also see they're eating tiny algae as well. So I'm gonna add a note here uh, that their resource population is algae. I wanna find out more about the algae. Because there are so many different types of zooplankton, they have many different methods of reproduction. Some mate and lay eggs, while others simply divide themselves in half. So this means that they are reproducing um, by themselves, which reminds me of the green leaves, which is kind of interesting, right? We saw that in the digital model. Algae are plant-like organisms. Some types of algae are huge, such as giant kelp. However, some of the most important types of algae are tiny. Many are so small that they can only be seen through a microscope. Again, I wonder, I'm gonna add a note, how do ecologists study these populations, right? Um, because it's not like the catch and release like we were seeing with the, the moon jellies. Tiny algae drift near the surface of the water where there is plenty of sunlight. Algae produce their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Using energy from sunlight, algae make glucose out of carbon dioxide and water. As they do this, they also produce oxygen. In fact, about half the oxygen we breathe is produced by algae in the ocean. There are thousands of types of algae, many of them very different from one another. Some have beautiful clear glass-like shells Others have whip-like tails that they use to swim through the water. Some algae even glow in the dark, producing a blue-green light. So cool. I'm going to write a note here. So cool that they can glow in the dark. Different types of algae have different methods of reproduction. In some cases, simply dividing themselves in half. Okay, so again, they are reproducing some by themselves, just like we heard um, about the zooplankton. Interesting. Leatherback sea turtles. The leatherback sea turtle is larger than any other kind of sea turtle on Earth. Growing up to two meters, 
6.5 feet long, it is different from other sea turtles in another way as well. Instead of a hard outer shell, the leather back has tough leathery skin covering its back. So we see here, oh, there's the, looks like there's the fish kind of hanging on to them. Leatherback sea turtles specialize in eating jellies. Yeah, so this is really key. I'm going to add a note here. Uh, these guys are the consumer populations of the moon jellies. That is really probably important to know. Instead of teeth or hard jaws, they have backward pointing spines in their throats to help tra trap the jellies they swallow. That is crazy. Scientists have estimated that one adult leatherback eats more than 2,000 pounds of jellies every year. Despite their soft bodies, adult leatherbacks are so big and fast that they have few predators. Okay, interesting. I'm going to make um, a note here. Oops. A note that they have few consumer populations. So not many things are eating them. Only large sharks and orca whales attack and eat adult leatherbacks at sea. However, leatherback eggs and newly hatched leatherbacks are often eaten by birds and small predators. Okay, so it's the babies that are more uh, vulnerable or in danger from being eaten. Humans also collect leatherback eggs to eat. Oh although egg collecting is against the law in many places. Leatherbacks swim far and wide across the ocean, ranging farther north than any other sea turtles. Leatherbacks swim hundreds of miles to gather near tropical beaches for the purpose of reproduction. After mating, a female drags herself up onto the beach, digs a hole in the sand, and lays about 100 eggs inside. Then she buries the eggs and returns to the water. When the tiny young turtles hatch a few weeks later, they dig their way out and race to the water, already completely independent. Wow, this is amazing. Really interesting. Um, oops, capital. I mean, it is really interesting. Uh, the babies are independent, so the mom is not sticking around um, to protect them. I wonder if that affects death rates in the population. Orca whales. Orca whales also known as killer whales because they are such fierce predators. This is exciting because we have a lot of these in Washington, which is really cool. These tooth whales hunt in packs like wolves, but they are much bigger than wolves. Orcas can grow more than 7.5 meters, which is about 25 feet long and weigh more than 5,900 kilograms, which is about 13,000 pounds. An orca has a tall fin sticking up from its back as high as two meters, six feet. So that's bigger than me in some cases. Most orcas live in family groups called pods. A pod of orca whales is usually made up of a mother and her offspring, both male and female. Pods of orca whales work together to hunt, chasing their prey from all sides. Some pods of orcas specialize in hunting large fish, but other pods specialize in hunting seals, whales, and other large marine animals, including sea turtles. Okay, interesting. So they do have, uh, this is the consumer population of sea turtles, but it looks like they also a lot of other resource populations. So they're not only eating those sea turtles. Humans are the only animals that hunt and kill orcas. Orcas live a long time, possibly more than 80 years in some cases, and they don't reproduce very often. Interesting. So they um, are not, not having many new birds but also live long. So they're not dying of old age um, very often. I wonder if that keeps things stable. Female give birth to one calf, baby whale, 
at a time, waiting several years between births. Orcas give birth in the water, and their calves are able to swim immediately. Like other whales and humans, orcas are mammals, and the calves drink milk from their mothers. Kind of cool that we have some things in common with the orcas. Green sea urchins. And this is a, a sea urchin, kind of cool, covered with sharp spines. Green sea urchins are small round animals covered with spines and tube feet that stick out in all directions. The tube feet have suction cups on the ends and are good for clinging to rocks and seaweed. Urchins also use their feet to sense the world around them. They have no eyes, but they can sense light and dark with their feet. Wow, I'm highlighting that part, that's really cool. Green sea urchins mainly eat a type of seaweed called kelp. A sea urchin has five teeth in the center of its underside. It looks like here is their teeth. And it leaves star-shaped marks when it takes a bite out of a piece of kelp. Gulls, crabs, and several other predators eat green sea urchins, despite their sharp spines. In addition, people catch green sea urchins to eat. Eating sea urchins is especially popular in Japan. Male and female sea urchins don't get together for reproduction. Instead, all the green sea urchins in an area release eggs and sperm into the water at once. They rely on water currents to bring their sperm and eggs together and produce the young. Interesting, I wonder if there are changes to the current this affects birth numbers, right? Because they are depending completely on the currents. Young sea urchins can swim and they drift with the tiny plankton until they grow into adult sea urchins. And here they are. Oh, look, there's the little bite marks. That's really cool. These are the bite marks from the sea urchins. They're star-shaped mouths. Really cool. So it sounds like there's so many different amazing organisms in the, the Arctic Ocean ecosystem where these moon jellies are living. Hopefully you found something out that might help you to think about what could be occurring in the moon jelly population.